Hey folks, it's Johnny Keeley here and today we are reviewing this Pro Camera Sling Bag from Instinct Backpacks. Instinct seem to be newcomers to the camera bag scene, but they've come in with some really interesting and cool ideas, so let's take a look. So this is not a sponsored video, but they did send me the bag along with a larger travel backpack as well that I'll be reviewing in the next few weeks. But I would liken this bag to a cool indie band's first album that is a little raw, but has some really fresh and interesting ideas. They say this is the first bag ever to have this durable X-Pack sail cloth used on um, a camera bag. I assume they're referring to the material the bag is made from, which is actually very durable and rigid, which is a positive. It keeps its shape even when empty, which it is right now. So this version of the bag weighs 0.78 kilograms and is 31 centimeters by 20 centimeters. There is another version of the bag, which is slightly lighter, I think, but it's made of a different material, which is not quite so strong and rigid. They say the bag can hold a mirrorless camera with three lenses or a foldable drone, probably with some accessories. On the outside, it can hold a tripod and a water bottle, uh, probably on each side, to be honest. We'll test all of that out in a minute, uh, along with whether it can hold this, the 70 to 200. They don't say it can, but I think it probably can. One thing that's really nice is it can also hold an 11 inch tablet. Uh, I usually, I usually edit with the iPad Pro here, which I think is like 12 inches or something like that. Um, but I do have this old iPad 4, which is similar size to an iPad Air, things like that. And this just goes in the bag there, and it has a little bit, so you can see, it just goes in the bag like that, and you can close it up. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. That's a pretty big tablet that a little bag like this can carry in its own compartment. So yeah, I like that. So you know, if you're carrying an iPad mini for your drone shots or whatever, you're gonna be absolutely fine with that. So this bag has two inner compartments. It has the main one at the top, which we'll look at in a minute. Uh, and it has this one at the front. These both have these sort of rubberized uh, weatherproof zips on them, which look really high quality. They're the same as the ones on my Shimoda bag. Um, and inside this pocket, you can see it has one main compartment and there is just so many other pockets. There's another one here, another one here. So that's sort of four sub compartments that look good for things like, uh, you know, cables and things like that. It has these two sort of pen compartments, which would be good for those cleaner brushes and things like that. It also has these sort of elasticated SD card holders, which, um, you know, I don't really trust these. There's a, I've had these on a few other bags and I just don't trust them. I carry my SD cards in a little case like this. It keeps them really safe. You can fit loads of SD cards, loads of mini SD cards, and it's much easier to remember this than lots and lots of little SD cards. However, this does obviously just fit right in there nice and easy. So you can put your SD cards in there as you'd expect. Now this is the main compartment. As I said, this thing has an absolute ton of pockets. It has this inner pocket here, which has this kind of separation as you can see, and it has the same kind of dividers in it as the front pocket, so you can put lots of cables and things like that in there. The inside of the bag is made from this sort of bright orange material, which I understand uh, on many camera bags, this is so that you can see uh, what's in there much more easily. The main compartment, you get two dividers, uh, for your gear, and interestingly, they have two little pockets on them. Uh, that's the first time I've seen pockets of this kind on the dividers, it's a really nice space saver. The Shimoda ones have these flap over ones that you can put batteries and things in like that, but they do take up an extra bit of space, so you could put filters or something in those, provided that you trust them. So that is the inside of the bag, and now let's talk about the outside of the bag. All the zips have this kind of non-slip uh, material, which is easier to grip when wet. 
similar to the Shimoda stuff there. And then you also get this little catch here for this one where uh, if you put it underneath here and button it on, you can see that's quite secure. Now you can't open the bag without unbuttoning that, which is actually, you know, if I try and pull that, you can see that you need to pull that quite hard to open it. So that keeps it nice and secure and stops anyone getting into your bag without you noticing. So the main strap has these little clamp things and this can be taken off and used as a camera strap if you attach these little guys to your camera, like this, I've got the Peak Design ones on there at the moment. Uh, so you can put that on there and then attach this strap to your camera. You know, cool idea. You only get one strap in the bag, so it's not super practical for me because that leaves this without a strap, but I do get it. I think it's a cool idea and, you know, you could just order another strap from them. But as I said, I'm pretty well invested into the Peak Design stuff, so that's what I'm gonna use. I probably won't use those little tabs. The bag also has some straps on the bottom for a tripod, and it looks like you just loosen them like this. I have a little Vanguard, what's it called? Uh, Vanguard VO2 Go 204AB, catchy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, put that in there, and I presume just pull these, yeah, it just tightens up. This is pretty, yeah, this works, this is cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool, I like that. And then easy to release, you just pull those up like this, and then your tripod should slide out. Yeah, that works, that's cool. So let's put some stuff in the bag. It says you can have one medium lens and two small lenses, but I disagree. Okay, we've got an 85 here. That's a 50. I'm gonna put the 85 on. I would say that, that the 85 1.8 from Sony, that is a medium lens in my opinion. 16 to 35, is that medium? Probably just at the top end of medium, maybe. So that's gonna go in the left-hand side. This is the Samyang 35mm 1.4. This is a heavy lens, but it's quite big. You know, I wouldn't call that bottom end of a big lens, I'd say, not a medium lens. So that is in there now. <clears throat> As you can see, those two are in there. Now we've got the 85 with the, uh, this is a A7R2 with the L bracket on there. Okay, so you can see those are in there. As I said, this is the Sony 16 to 35 F4. This is the Samyang 35mm 1.4. And I have the Sony 85 1.8 uh, on the camera and an A7R2 in there. Uh, so I push that down. It's quite snug, but that is way bigger than they describe in the, um, documentation, those are bigger lenses than they describe, in my opinion. So that's cool, you know, that is a, a good, good fit, in my opinion. So let's get that stuff out, and we'll take things a step further. Now, I actually tried this earlier, I'm not being completely honest, I know this fits. But this is interesting, okay, so I can take the uh, 50mm on there, with the L bracket, and I can actually put it in, front facing like that. Can you see where that is? So I've got that front facing. Now, this is a bit tall for the edge, but as you can see, this edge comes over like this. So I can actually fit 70 to 200 in the top like that. So let's go a bit crazy and put the Samyang 35 1.4 in as well. Notice I've still got the, um, the flare cover on the front of it as well. That's pretty impressive. So I've got a 50 mil 1.8, 70 to 200 and a Samyang 35 1.4 in there. This is a pretty heavy bag now, but you know, we got it in there. That's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. So, I mean, I think that gives you hopefully a good idea of what kind of lenses you can get in there. The other thing they talk about is drone stuff. So let's just have a little look at what we can fit because this is the bag that comes with the Mavic 2 Pro, Pro 2. Um, from DJI and I don't like this bag because not everything fits in it because they've got to have the controller on the outside here So this winds me up a little bit So we're gonna take stuff out of this and put it in there. And just just have a look So there is the drone itself. This I know is the same height as the uh, 70 to 200 so we're gonna put that in the middle So now we'll put the controller just in one side there it fits easy 
Now this is what I mean, look, this is the, uh, the multi-charger and I do need to take that everywhere I go. Battery. Battery, so I have three batteries. You can just sort of cram those in there. It's not a great idea to keep your batteries all on top of each other, but yeah, there we go. So that is Mavic Pro 2 with uh, two batteries and one on the drone itself, so three in total. The charging dock for the multi-battery charger, whatever that's called, and the controller in there. So it's pretty good, you know, fits it all in there. Let's just make sure it does up. Little tight, but to be honest, I could probably just push that down a bit. Yeah, I'm impressed. I think this is a bit of a TARDIS, uh, this bag. If you don't know what TARDIS is, just Google Doctor Who. Overall, this bag is packed with great ideas, some more useful than others, and some elements feel a little bit like a prototype, but overall is well thought out, really practical, and its main strength is its toughness and its rigidity. It feels strong and well made, which you would expect from its quite premium price of 128 pounds. But to summarize, I would trust this bag to protect my equipment under normal use. And this would be great for a small amount of equipment for a landscape photographer or a street photographer, someone who really uh, is often out in the rain and in the elements and throwing their gear around a lot, like me. If you're interested in any of the gear I showed in this review, I'll leave some links in the description to everything I talked about. And as I said, just, just hit the comments and ask me any questions you have about this equipment or my own equipment. I'll leave some other related videos on the screen right now for you to check out. And if you found those interesting, feel free to click the round button in the middle and subscribe. And if you do that, I will see you in the next video.